I'm still going to be. All right, we are live. (laughs) What's going on? (laughs) We are live. It is the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends Podcast Live Roundtable. I got my peeps with me Amy, Radowski, Charlie, Odie, Kat Shear. A couple people are working on their computers. Did we tell anyone we were doing this? We did. Okay, good. Are we sure that's Kat? That's she looks so different from what I just saw her five minutes ago. <laughs> I looked homeless in that last interview, let's be honest. <laughs> you look like oh you're my gosh. trying to be a spy. Oh, sorry. Oh, with these. Yeah. So I have you my You look like you in, are. And then I have my readers on because I'm trying to read my computer, but I'm going to have to do it another time. Oh, yeah. So yeah, oh, we just got off. We just special. got off an interview with uh, <laughs> one Miss Bethany Shadburn. It's fun to catch up with her. So look for that to come out in the upcoming weeks. Um, it, there's been a lot going on this week, and it's been a lot of the same thing. But um, this week, some things have kind of come to a head, and I just wanted to kind of get it out there a little bit. Um, last night, um, Andrew Hiller was on the Savon podcast to talk about the movement standards um, and the video submissions of now the master's athletes. Um, The infamous one is the David Hippensteel video. If you have not seen that, I recommend you go look at it. Um, I like David. I've met David. He's a nice guy, but he should be disqualified for moving forward. I think I've found a new right. way to do overhead squats, though. <laughs> see if that works out. Balance it on your head? Yeah. There's zero mobility needed. You just grip it and rip it. Yeah. Yeah, ben it's arm, interesting. On your head. I, I actually didn't think that Andrew being on the Savon podcast added anything to the discussion. Like we didn't really learn anything new or talk about anything interesting. Um, and I think Andrew's style of blogging or whatever he's doing is completely different than sort of the vibe on, on the Savon podcast. And so it didn't to, for me, it wasn't like I was more scanning the comments and like, I was actually talking to my friends in the comments and not really paying attention to the actual, what they were saying stuff because I'd heard it all before. Um, so it was interesting. I'd be interested to see sort of how people react to that. He got a ton of engagement in the comments because I think they both are have sort of like um, a viral following. Um, and to bring those two worlds together was kind of neat to see in the comments. But there wasn't really anything new that we talked about necessarily. And uh, I mean, I, I stayed up and I lost sleep to watch it because I wanted to see it. <laughs> But uh, it wasn't, you know, I hope it's not a regular thing with, with Hiller and Savon because they just, it's like oil and water kind of, they don't really mix in my opinion. Yeah. I think it's a, it be, it's a pissing contest at times, but what the value I got was Brian and Andrew being on together. Mm. Um, and that was that Brian saying that like the example, Brian saying the Ukrainians put up all those fake videos Uh, to protest what's going on in Russia and CrossFit had them all down the next day. Yet with some of these submission videos, they can't update leaderboards. And, and I, and so Brian was saying, maybe now they're saying we're not touching the leaderboard until we say it's final. And, and basically they were saying, well, that's Brian telling CrossFit, this is your out. Now let's wait and see if they're going to take it. Mm-hmm. I hope they do. I mean, I just, yeah. And and Brian could have probably said that without Andrew being on that podcast too. I mean, yeah, it was good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying that's the only thing I got out of it. I thought mm-hmm. the two of them interacted at times very well. Um, with the video and solutions, instead of just bitching about the problem, they actually talked about, these are ways we can do it better. 
yeah, providing solutions. Yeah, maybe, hopefully Brian's right. I mean, hopefully all this stuff sort of comes out in the wash. I know that um, I had done the math and looked and to see that even if um, Hip and Steel's video was like invalidated or he had a score of zero, he's still going to move on to the semifinals just based on his placing because there aren't many 65 plus people in the group. And if they're taking 30, you know, I mean, like if there's only 38 people, you know, most of them are going to get to move on and I'm exaggerating. I don't know what that number is, but um, I hope that come semifinals that people really pay attention to the judging and the videos and the movement standards and all that. And, and sort of hopefully CrossFit will set a precedence that they are, they are serious about the standards because they have been somewhat lax with masters. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it at some of the masters competitions that I've judged where, you know, we're allowed to take movement exceptions for people that have a known limitation, but that's in a live setting, not in an online setting. And like how many limitations are, are fair right? If someone has two arms that can't extend out and two legs that can't go beyond parallel and, you know, an eyeball that can't shut all the time, like what, where do you draw the line? And when does that become like an adaptive athlete and not an athlete in that, you know, in that age group or in that division? And that's kind of, I think, where, where we sort of need to figure that out because there are plenty of athletes in that age group then can, that can move well. And, it's a shame that some of these older athletes, you know, lose their mobility or have been fighting with it forever, but that doesn't mean that they just get a pass. Well, I think Andrew made a great point, Andrew Hiller, that um, if I'm number 31 or 32, I'm pissed as hell. Right. And we've only seen one of Hip and Steel's videos, right? And a deadlift, but we didn't see his, um, what are the other two movements in that strict press, <laughs> strict press? Yeah. Back squat. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm not and, optimistic that some of those other ones aren't, aren't right. invalid as well. And he's been a great inspiration and, and great for the games and great for the sport. He's, you know, he's very charismatic and he's super likable and he's super kind. And I just, you know, he, yeah, I just don't know that he can compete with that group. But, you know, when I did an online qualifier for a master's competition last year and I held the standard, I got so much pushback from the athletes, so much pushback, almost like they weren't used to being pushed on, you know, or being criticized for the way they move. And to me, a standard is a standard. It doesn't matter how old you are. So so maybe there is a problem in the in the atmosphere in the ecosystem where we are being you know too too lax maybe on some of those people and I'm not saying that that's what was instructed of um, you know management or team leads or head judges or anything like that I think it's just human nature he looks like somebody's grandfather like you feel bad that he can't you know do the things that they do but he's out there trying and things so. I mean, Andrew makes a point, like if he goes to the games, he'll get hammered because I know the group of people that judge age groups at the games and they are not staff level one seminar staff. They are these, you know, professional judges that travel the country and, and they know how to hold standards and they're not afraid not to. So but I guess I'm just confused because the standards shouldn't be surprised to 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 him. I mean, right? No, like, these are pretty I, I basic think... standards. <laughs> Yeah, I think the hard line of being held to those standards is what's the surprise, because I don't think they have been held to those high standards necessarily in the past, in other, in online stuff, at least. Say what you will about, you know, in person. I don't know. I never judged age groups at the games, so I don't know what that's like, but online. But hasn't he yeah. won the games before? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, then he, he would have been judged then, right? I would so here's this kind of scares me a little bit, but it'd be interesting to go back to an old games footage where right. he's moving and see if he's gotten no rep for things before. So I do want to say he was at Masters Fitness Collective two years ago. Yep. He was not this bad mm -hmm. okay. there. 
So something has happened in the last two years that has really limited his mobility. Okay. Um, 65 could be one of them. Sure. Exactly. True. And yeah. he's a dentist. So, you know, it, it's like he sits all day and is sort of hunched over. You know, I know a lot of people that I, I don't know many dentists, but I know like tattoo artists that have terrible backs and very bad overhead mobility and things like that because of their occupation. So mm -hmm. um, sure. that could be, but yeah, I mean, movement. maybe the standards get changed for 65 plus. Maybe you have to squat at parallel instead of below parallel. Like that would be okay. With yeah, me, I, can, I would think. I can get down it just, with that. <laughs> it, my problem isn't that, you know, people aren't holding this. It, my problem is that it's not, it's not across the board. Like his power cleans, his, his elbows did not come through. Uh, you know, I had an athlete qualifying for um, legends masters who got penalized for not bringing his elbows through every single time on his power cleans. Now he only did it two or three times and he got, you know, docked points for those two or three times, but some athletes are doing it every single time and they're not getting any penalty. So it's more about the consistency of what we're seeing and what they're upholding versus like the movement quality of the people. Like the people, we can't change how they move. We right. just can, you know, need to enforce it consistently. But isn't that the point of this whole thing is to move better, not to cow tail or whatever you want to say to, oh, well, I, presently can't get down there well because you haven't done your mobility you haven't done this you done that i mean i could say the same thing about me but right and i, I honestly don't know how it works in in-person competitions sometimes like i've i've judged other competitions where someone said you know like freddie camacho he can't he can't yeah. extend his elbows but sure. he does what he can and then he's judged based on that but who's like so <sighs> Is it? It's probably fair to say that about Dave Hippenstill too. That maybe he can't over, you know, extend. But that shouldn't mean that he can't get his elbows through on a clean because I've seen him do that and he's done it a couple times on video. Or it doesn't mean that he can't get below parallel. It just means he has to go a lot slower to do it. Yeah, I, I want to address what Andrew Sten says here, and what you said earlier, Kat. I think it's okay if we lower the standard for sixty-five plus, but it needs to be written as such. Yeah. And across the board, you, it's not a case by case basis unless right. there is a documented reason why he can't extend an elbow or whatever it be. But if they said, you know, you can, you don't have to have your elbows through on a clean if you're 65 plus because of limited mobility. Okay. Then everybody gets to play by the same rules. Yeah. I, and I, I agree with that. The problem is you're going to get some 65 year olds who move really well that don't want that. Yep. And they're like, screw that. I can do it the right way. You know, maybe the people that can't do it the right way shouldn't be in the sport anymore or, or shouldn't compete. Be comp competing at that level, right? Right. At that level. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And, and it's one thing to say, like, I, if you can't lock out your elbows, technically, that's an advantage because your range of motion is going to be shorter than somebody else's and you can do it faster. And so where do we draw the line on how we accept, you know, those limitations? You know, maybe there's a, there's two divisions. There's a limited movement division and a actual division. I don't know. You get or, my point. Or just like <laughs> other pro sports, you get to a level where you can't compete anymore. Right. You have, and to, you retire. have to retire. You can't get in. You can't get in. Yeah. But, and, and Andrew makes a good point here about athletes have to be honest with themselves and everything else. But if we keep letting bad reps go through, they're not going to, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to do that because they don't have to. I mean, you can only do it if you have to. Yeah. And this is nothing, like I said, this is unfortunately, you know, Dave is sort of the sacrificial lamb here for, for all of this, but I guarantee you, you pull, videos of you know all of those 65 and plus and you probably could have a a bunch of you know penalties and if it means more work for crossfit to do then get more people to look at the standards and look at the videos and get it right because yeah you know you're inviting these people for a reason they they need to be you know eligible according to the rules right but then you have like what is what do we have to adjust for what standard do we have to adjust for if I have one lung and I can't run, does that mean? Right. 
Does that mean you run I, half the distance? I yeah, have no. the distance because. No, now we're it now gets, we're. It gets weird. It just it's here's the standards. You can't do it. You can't do it. Now we're into See participation in trophies. Right. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Well, then get a ribbon for doing the open. Right. There you go. How dare you? <laughs> it's crazy. Or get a level for doing the open. Speaking there you go. Of, I really feel like they need to come out with more information about this. <laughs> this is really yeah, they, only because you're level eight. You not not like they have anything else to worry about right now, Amy. Okay. So, <laughs> Listen, have Give a division a worried about the, their some stuff, and then don't come yeah. out and say we're going to do this levels. But what does it mean? I think I think, like many things, I think they jumped the gun by even publishing them, That's right? Because because yeah. don't publish them if you're not ready to have the whole narrative around what they mean and what the implications are. If it if it has to do with your participation in the 2022 season, wait until the 2022 season is over, the day after, publish them and prepare your statement about your explanation about what it is and what it means. Yep. But you know we're we're not dealing with um, a full deck. I don't think like with <laughs> seriously. I know I'm laughing. Running you're it running right. like we are not running on all cylinders right now. And when I say we, I mean CrossFit, not me. Yes. And that's the type of great information you get on Cat's Rant. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Every week. <laughs> Listen, guys. Let me tell you something. Uh, yeah. So there's that. Well, um, a huge shout out to Jules D, who last week commented. That she is a fellow level oneer, with me. Love it. Uh, so, we are, we are tied together in the level one. You're number one. We're number one. All right. So, let's get into some happier topics or something. I have an I have a topic for discussion. Um, we all know about the grid league, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're not going happy. Yeah. No, that's okay. Um. <laughs> And the grid league, you know, used to be a national thing. Well, now it's very big in Florida. Yeah, like it's still Florida. existing in Florida and it happens and you get, you know, all these, I think they're cool movements. People, you know, will shit talk about how, you know, you shouldn't do a toes to bar, chest to bar thing. I can actually do one of those. So I'm kind of proud of the fact that I can do them and I like them. I would like um, to see a video of that, please. Okay. On I'll TikTok. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me write that down. <laughs> um, but anyway, so lots of crazy things. And I, they have a couple TikTok accounts where they'll ask questions like, what do you think this athlete is looking at? And, you know, I answer and I get the answers right all the time. Like there was a, an athlete doing like this and going like this. And they're like, what is she looking at? And everyone's like, oh, she's looking at the timer. She's looking at the timer. I'm like, no, no, she's looking at her referee because you have to make sure that you're locked out before mm -hmm. you go again. Like the judging there is very good and very fast. And like, yes, 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 you got it. But I saw something the other day that concerned me and I wanted to get your um, opinion on it. They are having tryouts for grid kids, 18 to 14. 18 to 14. Moving fast, really fast, high skill movements. What do we think about that? I am not sure I approve. What would be the difference between that and gymnastics? Those load. are moving fast, high skill moves. Not not with a barbell over your head. Well, do we know if there's going to be certain speaking of standards, certain standards no. that they would be No, I, I yeah, I know nothing about it. So okay. I'd like to maybe learn more about it. But yeah. just, it's, initial it's just thoughts, like levels. Like, <laughs> yeah. We need more information. There, there was I, a post yeah. made, that's all we know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want more information. I mean, um it, it's interesting and I think it's cool that kids have another thing to do and compete in and everything else but it just it the the coach in me and like the the movement um ambassador you know of technique mm -hmm. and you know technique before load kind of thing made me a little little uh skeptical but yeah teddy you make a good point like is it more dangerous than high level football maybe not but who that? what do we that? have um <laughs> Do we have the right coaches in place and do we have enough experience with, you know, how kids move and things to, to make that okay? Yeah, I, th I think for me, it's it like actually what Andrew was saying. I think it does depend on what types of movements they are and and the um, 
in the weights, you know, the movements and the weights, because I, I think there are some kids who have maybe, maybe th these are kids who have started CrossFit, you know, preschool and are familiar and they might be okay doing it, but, but maybe not putting a noob, <laughs> a new athlete who's never done CrossFit. Hey, let's do this thing. I mean, you, know? you, you look at like down on pepper eight at 18, right? It's not going to be, that's not going to be a problem or Sprague, you know, the, any of the Florida boys. Yeah. You're they landing a plane in Charlie's office. They're fixing the roof, which is great. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect for doing a podcast. <laughs> right. So I just thought that was an interesting yeah. point and maybe, maybe we can learn more about it and maybe we can even, I would be interested in, you know, this isn't just a CrossFit podcast. Like we do functional fitness stuff. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe we can get some grid folks from Florida and I, I know one gym owner who's pretty into it and maybe we could get him on to talk about it. So I just thought mm -hmm. that was interesting. Um, I have one other thing to talk about. Rory shaved his beard. Yeah. Thank goodness. He is back to pretty boy status. I liked a little bit of facial hair, but it did start to get very excessive. Dude, that dude was chiseled by God himself. He is huge. I mean, just a big but man. He is good looking. And I like it. <laughs> He's all right. It's okay. It's it's okay Charlie, even you were crushing put over some, him. Put some water on yourselves. Charlie, when we walked by him at the games, you were like, whoa. Yeah, he's pretty. His yeah. kids are adorable, too. I've seen pictures of, you know, every once in a while he'll post on uh, his Instagram with his kids, and they're so they're so cute. Good jeans. Some good jeans there. But, yeah, so he shaved the beard. He gave a he, – he did, like, a little teaser post at first saying that he was going to shave it, and he showed sort of everybody at Mayhem's reaction to him, but he never showed himself. So, of course, I had to, like, troll his page for, like, a day before he posted the actual, like, reveal of him. And he looks – just like he did, you know, getting rid of all the gray on his face makes him look a lot younger, I will say. I kind of like a little salt and pepper. Or long-haired Australians. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> also true. That's great. That's great. Yeah, there, there are a few people in this world that when you see them in person, you just are taken aback. Rory is one. Yeah. Bethany is two. Yeah, she's gorgeous. She is. And... There we have it. And I don't know Rory personally, so I don't know if he's like a super, super nice guy. I would assume that he is. Um, but Bethany couldn't be sweeter, right? I mean, yeah. she, her looks match her personality. I think that's why she's such a babe. Yeah. Never uttered a word to her the first time I saw her. You just babe. said it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, I don't really have anything else, man. I had a mishap today. Oh yeah. Let's talk about it. Do okay. we have a picture? Can we show everyone the picture? I, I, I don't know how I, Scott has it. If he can share it up there. I don't we know. Haven't, I, don't, I don't have it on this okay. apparatus. Oh, mm -hmm. We haven't discussed your quarterfinals. Uh, oh yeah. How it went. Well, okay. Out. Here's how it went. I was going out of town, so I had to do all the workouts on uh, Thursday night. I did three workouts and I did the CrossFit total. I did the, um, I did not like that. You can only have three lifts. I didn't like that. I wish well, it did, was 10 minutes. Wasn't there something that said like warm up lifts didn't count? What was that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, yeah, because I was in such a hurry, I didn't read all that. Okay. So that's on me. I, I take responsibility <laughs> for that. However, so going on. Okay. That's what I did first. And then I did the chipper and that one went better than I thought. You know, I got through that and then had, you know, several minutes to try to get muscle ups, which I didn't, but I still tried it. Then I did the dumbbell snatch toes to bar one. And by that point, I mean, 50 pound snatch, I can definitely do it, but it just, it wears me out. And I just, was totally worn out with that one. Uh, so then I went to work Friday morning. 
got off of work at noon, came in to the gym and completed the last two workouts. Um, I thought all of the workouts this year were totally doable, like totally doable. And had I had the whole weekend to, to do them, like I would have approached them much differently, but like, I think I would have thought more about it and then, you know, space them out. But it was really more like I got to grip it and rip it because otherwise I'm not going to do them. So this was definitely all about doing that one rep, Scott, and posting a score, whatever I needed to do just to post a score. So that's how it went. How did you feel about the fact that they were very doable? Like no, yeah. knowing, knowing what, what the, um, what the intention of those workouts are supposed to be, mm -hmm. how did you feel about it? Um, I honestly felt so going back to it, like, okay, this would have me thinking about the levels, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that had me thinking that would be really great open workouts for me. Like, yeah. like if I could just go into that level and just say, Hey, these are, this is my open. And then maybe there's no quarterfinals or something like that. Oh, but that's um, interesting. I like that. Yeah. There's no way they're going to do that though. Totally not. Like no, but I like, I do like the community neat. aspect of doing the open, but I'm just saying like, yeah. I felt like it was almost two opens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't pay once. You have to pay twice. Well, yeah. I mean, oh, again, listen to this. This is, this is a part I, I find, I mean, smart on them, but I didn't do it. But so I uh, also qualified for the occupational games because I'm a teacher. Yeah. And so I could have been on both leaderboards of if I would have paid for both of those. I only oh. had to do the workouts once, but I had to pay to do them on, on both. And so I was like, you know what? Um, I'm not going to pay a hundred dollars to do the same workouts, like whatever. Like you just, could just, you could just ask Brian friend to figure out for you where you'd be on sure. that leaderboard. <laughs> he would probably yeah, totally. calculate that for you. <laughs> right. So Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, that stinks. Yeah. So then yeah, this I thought, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, okay, so then oh, um, the my goal there. was I really wanted to take a week off of CrossFit, like just to let my body reset. And I never got a chance after the open because then I was doing this comp and then quarterfinals. So like right after this quarterfinals, I was like, I've, I'm taking this week off. Okay. So I've taken since Sunday off and today was going to be my first, okay, it's not a full week, but today I was going to go back in. This is my first workout. And today had like three AMRAPs in it um, to complete, like you would complete each in 10 minutes, whatever time you're done, or sorry, not an AMRAP, but you would rest until that next 10 minute starts. And so the first workout was 963 of uh, power snatches at 95 pounds and then burpee box jump overs at 24 inches. And I was on my last set of three burpee box jumps and I just kind of missed the box. Um, and I landed on top and I was like, oh, whoops. And then there were some other athlete coaches there and they're like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, I just forgot to jump. <laughs> and then so I finished my reps and then I had that time to rest. And I kind of looked down at my leggings and I was like, oh, there's blood coming through there. And so then I pulled it up and it was... <laughs> mm gushing all over the place. So, um, did you get I stitches? Look. Cause that looked really like a clean, deep cut. So I didn't want to look, I just said, I need you guys to look and tell me if I need stitches. And so mm -hmm. we put a bunch of gauze and I kept bleeding through it and they kept, and so they looked and they're like, so you might want to go, um, see if you can get some stitches. And so, mm -hmm. um, I went and they, uh, the doctor said I could stitch it up. She's like, but I think honestly, just stary strips will be okay because I think okay. it will heal the same. And so that's what we went with. And I was like, well, sometimes too, you want to leave that open just so that it heals better and you don't get an infection. You know, if they close right. it and that's up, that's what I was like more worried about. That's inside. why I went more about yeah. infection. Your um, I wonder if your ankle will get all like bruised and stuff from like Ooh. the blood draining. We'll have to like, you'll have to send us update photos. I will. I want to see. So that was that. And uh, so I did not finish the other two workouts that were part of it. So I was like, you know, I'm good for today. Good first day back. Yep. Great, great first day. <laughs> good first day back. Oh, but this was funny. I texted my dad and I, you know, texted him the photo of it. And he goes, I'm no level two CrossFit coach, but I think you need to jump higher. <laughs> it's like, thanks, thanks, dad. That's great. Great. Super helpful. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Well, we are up on our half hour. So Perfect. awesome that everybody joined us. And we want to make a little announcement. This Monday, Monday's episode will be our first live celebrity interview. We'll be using the new uh, software to, to go live with someone that we've been missing a little bit around the CrossFit space. And we want to find out what's up, what he's up to, what he's doing. And is he following this madness that's going on in the CrossFit space? So this Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern time, noon Pacific, we will be interviewing live on air, Armin Hammer. Yay. So super we are super stoked for that. You'll see some promotions this weekend and we will take live comments uh, for the man himself. So make sure you join us next week at three o'clock uh, and ask your questions to the man, the myth, the legend, Armin Hammer. New dad, back to California. Find out what's going on. Lots of jujitsu. Yeah. And dogs. He has three dogs. Yeah. So with that, with that, <laughs> we will say adieu from the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends. Bye. Adieu. I like that. Uh, damn. Uh, damn. That's my word for wordle. That's what I use sometimes. I do too. That's because that's what Natalie told me to use. Yep. Bye, guys. Kids.